Joining us now to discuss uh, the state of regional banks is the chairman and chief executive officer of Valley National Bank, Ira Robbins. Welcome back, Ira. Good to have you with us. Great to be here. Thank you, Tyler. You know, I guess I, I guess if I were sitting in your shoes, I would sit there and say, OK, well, we've come through the, this rough year with Silicon Valley Bank, Republic and others, uh, and we thought we were coming out of this. And along comes New York Community Bank. This is the last damn thing I needed. Am I right? Yeah, I felt like, are we going to go through PTSD again, right, with what yeah. happened last March? And was hopeful that wasn't going to transpire this time. Yeah, I think the, the real difference is back in March, there was this, you know, concern about trust within the banking industry, right? We are an industry with a foundational perspective that our responsibility is to be a good steward of our depositors. And what happened last March was there was concern. If I put my money in any bank, what does that mean for me? I'm actually going to be able to take my money out. You know, and, and, and I, th I think there was then this correlation that said, does a bank stock price then associate with someone's ability to take their money out from an, an organization? And it's been a full year now that we've had to work through with our clients to assure them that not every bank is the same. Regional banks across the entire spectrum are largely on sound footing. These were really isolated incidents. And we are still a very safe and sound industry. And then we look what happens uh, you know, about a month or so ago with New York Community Bank. And we go through the process again of just making sure our clients understand that there is a difference between each individual bank. I think there's been some evolution over that last year where there really wasn't a lot of deposit flight at all uh, and, and are much concerned re regarding the overall deposit footings of the organization, which was very different from what it was about a year ago. How uh, would you characterize it? Has there been a difference in the, the nature or intensity or frequency of your interactions with regulators over the past year? I think at Valley, we've always really fundamentally said we need to have a strong regulatory relationship and make sure that our regulators understand who we are, where we're headed, what our strategic initiatives are across the organization, and how we focus on, on risk management. So for us, we've had a very important dialogue with our regulators. We prioritize it across the organization. I think the regulatory agencies now have been very clear in outlining what the goals, what the goalposts are as to where each organization needs to look like. It's just making sure that we're communicating and prioritizing those initiatives and strategies moving moving forward. So we've definitely enhanced the conversations we've had with our regulatory agencies. Uh, but that said, the goalposts haven't changed at all. When the news on New York Community Bank uh, came up here in the last month or so, what kinds of conversations did you have with your direct reports or your board about this uh, and, and what you as a, as a bank and a banking executive might need to do? to uh, shore up confidence or, or, or protect the brand? I think we are a relationship bank, and our focus is not so much just on the digital. Are we able to connect with our clients from a digital perspective? But do we really have a relationship with them uh, for more from a human inter interaction perspective? So right off the bat, the conversations are, how many times have we reached out to our clients? How do we have the appropriate conversations with our clients conveying who we are as an, as an organization? I think we had to make sure that they understood some of the differences between us and New York Community Bank, what the portfolio differences were, to make sure they were informed to be able to have appropriate conversations with their clients. I think that was really what the preemptive conversations were that we had. With the board, I think, once again, it's just a similar dialogue that says, do they understand what those differences are? What are the outcomes, potential risk uh, exposures, if something does go down a path? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's crazy to me when I think about sort of the operating environment that we're sitting in today. And we've been in an inverted curve, Tyler, for almost three years now, right? And I think about sort of a bell curve that says in a normal operating environment, the outcomes sit in the middle of that bell curve. In an inverted curve, we've been operating for the last three years on those tails, right? There's a, an outcome here that's on a tail. There's an outcome here that's on a tail. And I think as a risk manager, we're really focused on how we not – evolve or get rid of all those risks from the, the uh, tail, but how do we lessen some of those influences that the tails do provide to us?